conducted this investigation, which wound up in this, uh, which wound up culminating in this documentary called No Farmers, No Food. And what we found was that pretty much every climate problem is oftentimes addressed by a very drastic top-down solution that would it's essentially consolidate more power uh, at the top and t take control of people's lives at the bottom. That, that seems to be the, the sort of the, the way it's moving forward. And it's all justified because, hey, we have this climate emergency and we need to solve it. It's an existential threat. So yeah, you might need to forego some of your freedoms, but you know, do you want to have not, not, not have a planet and have less freedoms or just be dead, right? That seems to be the binary choice. What would you tell someone who has bought into that into that line of thinking? Well, the first thing to keep in mind is that we can't have a climate crisis if temperatures are unusually cool. And we know for a fact, the United Nations has acknowledged it and put out their own temperature history chart showing this, that for most of the time period that human civilization has existed, temperatures have been warmer than today. The warming that we've had in the last 100, 150 years, it's because 150 years ago we were in the Little Ice Age, which was the coldest period of the past 10,000 years. So we have people who have a political agenda, who have brainwashed much of society into believing the temperatures are unusually hot, we're having record temperatures, hogwash. And moreover, the asserted climate harms, whether it be hurricanes, tornadoes, droughts, wildfires, none of them are getting more frequent or severe. In fact, the vast majority of them are becoming less frequent and severe. So we're seeing not only do we not have the heat that people talk about, but the impacts of warmer temperatures have always been more beneficial and they continue to be today. You're essentially saying that the premise is incorrect, that there, there is no climate emergency that needs to therefore implement those sort of globalist top-down controls, is that correct? Right, right. And, and in fact, with more atmospheric carbon dioxide, with warmer temperatures, the benefits far outweigh the harms. We know, for example, NASA satellites have shown that there has been a substantial greening of the Earth. When you have more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that's basically plant food. So NASA has documented a substantial increase in global foliage. We also know that about 20 times more people die from cold than from heat around the globe. And if we have a modest warming that continues, what it means is that we're saving 20 lives for every one life that's lost due to more heat. Um, that's just a couple of things. Also, we know the crop production has been increasing in virtually every country in the world, long-term, mid-term, and short-term, again, because of more atmospheric carbon dioxide, longer growing seasons. Now, these are things that the media don't cover.